entering the garden. It's kind of like exiting all the stress. Where is she? Oh, <laughs> I couldn't even see you in the garden. I found this one scraggly measly, <laughs> this one scraggly row, and I've already got this much. Wait, that's from, is that from half the width of the garden or the whole lower row? The just, purples? No purples, just this, just from here to there. So that's a quarter of our beans. Not even. And this is like the scraggliest row. That's amazing. <laughs> it's one of the most productive things you could possibly grow. It's unreal. Yeah, as long as the bean beetles don't get them. Yet. I mean, pull, but they're, how are they doing? You've been looking at them closely. They look great this year. Well, we've sprayed them. With BT? No. Oh. With pyrithium, I think. I thought it was neem oil. No. It's, uh, oh. the pyrithium is an organic approved chemical. It's a neurotoxin, but it breaks down in the sun really fast. So it kills the bean beetles. But then like a day of sunshine and it's, from what they say, it's gone. It completely breaks down in the light. And I promise you all of your organic beans you buy at the grocery store have had that on them. <laughs> yeah, that or something similar. <laughs> so you don't want it on you. It's a little nasty, it smells nasty. You can smell it when you apply it. But it works. And we spray it in the evening so we don't kill bees and um, we don't let our kids deal with it. We're careful about it. Anyway guys, we got this huge, awesome bean harvest. We got a bunch of stuff we're trying to do today, but Bree just said, I'm, I am gonna go out into the garden this morning and quit worrying about mold issues. If you don't know about mold issues, you should go back and watch the last three videos. <laughs> <laughs> Turned into three videos um, for more info on what's going on with that. Well, I was at my women's like coffee shop gathering. I go, I mean, it's every week, but I go like once a month. And they're asking me, excuse me, they're asking me, how are you? And I told them about the mold and I was like, they're like, oh, that's so heartbreaking. I was like, it is. And I know I should be super concerned about my family and I am, but I'm so sad about my garden. I feel like it's going to just go to waste because I have to deal with my, my brain is so full. Like I have to deal with that stuff. But this one girl said, well, why don't you just take one day and you know, go harvest in your garden. Just take, we just set aside one day. <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, why don't I do that? Good idea. It was her idea. My idea was like, just let the garden go to pot. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> I didn't know, like my brain just felt so overwhelmed. So she was like, and then of course she was like, who can help you? She's like, I'll come help you pick and all that. And I actually thought of another friend who offers every time I see her. I love helping in your garden. Can I please come help in your garden? Oh, that's cool. So I should have called her to come today, but I forgot. So I'm gonna see if she'll come like next week and do this again. That's a great idea. And then like let her keep as much as she wants, you know? Does she have a garden? It's like just a square. Oh, cool. I just picked up. Do you smell that wonderful smell? It's the cilantro. No, it's the corn. The corn is blooming, the honeybees, there's other species, but the honeybees primarily are swarming the corn blooms. And if you've never smelled it, it's an incredible, beautiful smell. And what it means is corn coming soon. Because soon after they bloom, um, they tassel like this and the bees come pollinate them. You start getting corn ripening. Grace has some news here. What happened, Grace? What happened this morning? So we have two broody hens, and they one of them, one of her only one of her eggs hatched, and that was like yesterday. And then the black one that we have, all of most of her eggs hatched. Two of them didn't, and then there's three that hatched, but two of them are dead. So now there's only one. So two broody hens. Two chicks. Two living chicks. Grace is actually going to take them and raise them. I think they probably have a better shot because what the reason we're doing that is because what it, if we have these two broody hens, what it means is having these probably two whole setups just to take care of them. And that's a huge logistical challenge. So we are thinking it might be simpler if she actually um, puts them in a little brooder in her room and raises them for a few weeks. For pets. 
for pets. All right, have fun. See ya. I'll check on you in a little bit and see those broody chicks in your setup. But these are a new variety. A viewer sent us these seeds. I think from Johnny's Seeds was the brand, but the viewer sent them to our P.O. box. And they're like called strawberry sunflowers. They're so pretty. I've never grown this kind. Look at how beautiful wow, they are. Wow, that's really pretty. Where are the elderberry? Oh, here they are. They might have gotten eaten. Oh, are you serious? Hey, look. You think the birds? Or do you think they just haven't come on yet? I don't know. It looks no, like No, they the... got eaten off. Are See? you serious? Our raspberries look good. Look at our elderberries. Everything looks good. A little wild, but good. It's a little bit wild, but that's okay. That's kind of how we like it, and we're working on the tomatoes. Oh my gosh. I think we filmed enough tomatoes, but look at this. Let me show you. Look at the fruit on this tomato plant. Just beautiful, beautiful. All the way up, all the way up, ripening from the bottom. It's so pretty. It's like a rainbow. They're starting to fruit up here, way up high. Just tons and tons of fruit on these. Yummy? Yeah, all I've had to eat so far today is raw green beans and raw tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good though. It makes me feel good. Hey, bud. Little white banana. Bana Right, tomato? Right. I'll show you what's when my pink I was going to have to get one for Grizz and Bob. Okay. I would get one that doesn't have dirt splattered on it. Look at these over here. It's ripe enough. No, it's for Bella. I'm going to eat this. Mmm. So good. Tastes like sweet sunshine. Okay, see ya. Maybe let's figure something out. So I've decided with the tomatoes, if we're up to our necks in mold remediation, that I'm gonna pick them anyway, and I'm gonna throw them in freezer bags, and I'm just gonna put them in the freezer. Because I've seen other people do that. Jess at Roost and Refuge, I saw her recommend that recently. Um, and then we'll because it's into, easy and fast. It's easy and fast. You just throw them in the freezer bag, they do just fine, and then you deal with it later when you can deal with it. Well, that's a good idea, I guess, if you're super busy to keep save your harvest and not lose it. It's going to be a bigger volume, though, because it won't be cooked down. But it's, we got freezer space right now. we got right freezer now. space right so, now. Okay. I saw a bull for sale nearby, like just down the road, a really nice one, for $800. And I was like, we could buy the bull get our cow pregnant because she needs to get pregnant. She's getting behind on that schedule. And um, then butcher him. <laughs> but that's probably not. How's that going to make him feel when he hears about this? Well, plant? I was thinking is maybe like that's <laughs> not what we need to be doing right now. I maybe have to keep reminding myself. <laughs> like maybe we shouldn't do that right now. I just don't want to run out of beef. All right, guys. And so we got a couple other things going on in the garden. We're getting this is going to be our first kind of winter garden area planting. Honestly, we probably should have planted it like this week, but that's okay. Uh, we're, I'm gonna extend this tarp out over one more bed, so we'll have three beds prepped. We'll get those in, and then we'll do one more set of three if we have time, um, weed-free, and then we'll do some others without treating them with tarp to kill all those seeds. All right. Show me your hat. <laughs> Is that your hat? I tried to cut the top off so that my I could just keep my hair up off my neck. And still, sorry, that was probably a terrible face. And still have a hat, but I cut it too much. I think it looks great. It won't stay on. Mm. Mom. Look, he's wearing the top. Ah, ha, ha, that's cute. I think. It's like a little beanie. That's a bummer. Mama. It's a beanie, not a bummer. I'm doing probably the most selfish thing I could be doing right now, which is at the same time not selfish. And it's neat when things work that way. I'm making a smoothie. You heard Bree say that she'd only had a green bean or green beans and tomatoes, which is, that's, that's great food, but it's not a great breakfast. So I'm making her this protein smoothie. Um, and it's selfish because I know everyone will have a better day if she and I get that protein in us. The kids already ate breakfast earlier, but here we go. <laughs> Getting these fences set up in preparations for putting the cow on a new section of our front lawn. Cow just loves being on this fresh grass. And towards this time of the summer, 
our grass has slowed down a little bit, it's drier, and um, it's nice to have her off that pasture for a little while. So here we go. We've got this fence set up, and Justice and I are going to move the cows into the fence. Wilder's joining us because he's um, he's a farm boy. We just got to get this gate open. I'm going to open it up and drop it all on the ground. The goats are in the barn now, so we don't have to worry about them escaping. And the cows know what's happening because we've done this enough days in a row. Well, I'm guessing they they know what's happening because we've done this a couple days in a row. And so I think they're going to come right out with us. But what they don't know is exactly where we're going because we're going to a brand new section of the yard. So I'm going to grab a bucket of alfalfa. My scoop. Where's my scoop? <laughs> I had two scoops in here this morning and I left them here. Okay, well. Okay, the cows are happily grazing in the side yard here, and it's nice to have them out here, right beside the house. They'll probably be okay on here and still have plenty to graze on for a day and a half. Probably, I'll move them, I'll probably keep them here through tomorrow midday and then move them, or maybe tomorrow evening. For just about 15 minutes though, I just found a quick window. Grace and I are going to go pick this chamomile before it's just gets totally wasted. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I only picked half the beans so far. I was gonna pick the rest this evening when it cools down. We're actually eating some of these beans for lunch uh, because we've got them and they're fresh so um, we're cooking them right here. This is the type we grew. It's a stringless bush bean. Um, and then there's a, there's about maybe 5% of the beans, just a second buddy, about 5% of the beans we grew are these flat beans that have strings in them, which I can't really explain that. What are you eating? Jelly beans. Jelly beans. Oh wait, what did you say? Jelly beans or dilly beans? Dilly beans. Dilly beans. Oh, spicy. Spicy, dilly, garlic. This is the last jar we made. How many? Three? We made three jars of dilly beans and they're almost gone. I'm hoping to make more. And these are fermented dilly beans. They turned out so good. The kids have eaten most of them. They have. <laughs> and they usually eat the dill heads too. They've been snacking, just snacking on them. Like, get them. Whenever they want them, they just go grab them and eat them. And they've been begging me, well, a couple oh. of them, to get that giant jar of sauerkraut. It's been up there <laughs> since. Uh, July 17th, so not quite a month yet, and they want it open. So what I'm, I need to do, I may do it today, is take it down, put it in smaller jars, put it in the fridge so they can actually eat it when they want it for snacks. We should start calling them jelly beans. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Okay, I told you I was going to show you these chicks and Grace's little setup. It's pretty warm in the house in the summer, so we are not using a heat lamp. The chicks are not brand new. They've been under their moms a little. They like to curl up under stuff, so I gave them this little cave sort of thing. Two little chicks. Eating, drinking. I know, it's hard. It's a chicken. It's hard to teach chickens. I know. Oh, sorry. There's the neck and neck, and her four. Well, three. three. The calves are out. That's so frustrating because I have something I need to do now. A job I need to do. I'm gonna start by setting the fence back up here where they messed it up. I don't know how they did this. And I don't know what in the world. Maybe it maybe it fell over? It's possible. It's kind of on a tension corner here. But Alice is not happy that she's separated from her babies. Hey you guys, we gotta get you back in.
Well, she, he went in pretty easy. Let's see if I can sneak by her here and get her to go back up. Now mama's out. Don't go down that hill. Nope, don't go down that hill. You'll break your leg. time to deal with this right now they're having to go back in the pasture which I hate for them because there's just less to graze on out there the steer is still up here so I need to close that fence and go get him oh got him in okay that could have gone worse um, it could have not happened at all that's what you get when you're dealing with living beings and it's possible it was actually that fence pulled out on its own. I didn't see it happen, so I don't know. Okay, I'm glad that's over. It was just took a minute to get him back. How, how's it going with the beans? Good. The kids and I have been working on this for the last little bit. And then these are gonna be dilly beans or stir fry beans, and then these ones that were a little too far gone are gonna be like ones that we cook. I don't know how many bags yet. I think it's probably only like 12 quarts. Well, that's great. My mom's here now and my dad, and they they brought us out these HEPA filters. We're, and my mom's helping bag up these beans. You've got them all snapped Just and you're bagging. Us. So there's a nice bag of beans. They'll go straight in the freezer. I was sitting here with the girls listening to stories, listening oh, nice. to The Giver, actually. Oh, nice. We were doing this together, and I just thought, this is like a dream come true. It's like, I feel like I'm finally getting a taste of the payoff. Y'all have done a good job on your garden this year. This is really productive. And Say that's good, though. I mean, with the girls, I feel like I'm finally getting a taste of, so like, yeah. just being together. Yeah. Do I you think want... they're starting to get, the, like, understand how to do that. It's cool. Thanks, Joy. There's a filter, another filter, and one more filter there. There's one more in the house, so there's four total. Well, this day is coming kind of full circle because we're going back to the garden to pick more beans. Everyone's out there except our oldest daughter's making supper in the kitchen, and um, we're the last stragglers going out to pick beans. I know it's not right. What'd you pick? A pumpkin. It's not right. What needs picking next? All the way down. Both sides. Okay, sounds good. I'll go down. You could go and get the rest of the purple beans. Oh, nice. We have just less than half of the beans left to pick, but we have more hands working on it right now than we have all day. So hopefully we can knock it out. It's still a lot though, just between here and right there where Bri is. We'll see if we can do it. All right, we are done. We got a bunch of beans and we're headed into the house. Woohoo! It's a bean bonanza. It's a bean-anza. Bean-anza, folks. Hey, it's a bonanza. Bean-anza. It's twice what we got this morning. It's a double bonanza. Yeah. Well, guys, our day is winding down. There's beautiful, quiet homestead noises outside. Well, and a weed eater but you can hear the ducks out behind the house. Our guests have left, our meal is over, the day is done. We've got some beans that we'll probably work on this evening. The girls get to work on them with Bree. We're gonna say goodnight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your time with us. It's been another great day on the homestead and we'll see you, we think, tomorrow. Bye.